everyone, it's Iona and I'm back again for another video. In the previous video we had a look at how to create our very own bug hotels. For those of you who haven't had a chance to have a look at that, I'll leave a link above. In this video I'm going to be answering some questions such as where, sh where we should be putting our bug hotels, where's best suited for our insects. Um, I'm also going to be talking about what materials suit different insects needs and also um, when we should be expecting our visitors in our bug hotels, what times of year um, before we have a wee look at what else we could do to support nature in our gardens. But before all that, we're going to catch up with Cameron, who's an outdoor instructor at Dumfries House. And he got involved and decided to make his very own bug hotel, so we're going to have a look at that first. I'm going to be taking you guys outside into the urban area to collect supplies for your bug hotel. You can, what I'm going to be using to collect supplies is a butter box. I'm going to be putting supplies in this butter box and I'm basically going to be making my buckle tail with a butter box. You can use plastic bottles etc. But me personally I just prefer using butter boxes because you can set them in their side and the bugs can climb in them easily. So there's a plentiful supply in urban area, you just need to look very carefully. Um, if you see like grass or that grown at the road verge, then feel free to pick it because it's likely that that grass will get killed anyway. Anyway, let's go on our wee adventure in the urban area. Take my butter tub and I begin to go a wee wander around the neighbourhood. Firstly, I come across a wall which has some moss grown on it. You can pick the moss off the wall and line the bottom layer of your bottle or butter tub, like so. Next, I find some ivy in the road which is perfect as ivy can grow almost anywhere and get great roots, so again I line another layer. Next I find a bit of grass owned by the council and there's some dead grass in amongst it or some leftover cuttings. Pick up this and add almost two layers of grass because it will allow bugs in and to bugs to hibernate and nest in there. Next I find a pine tree and the pine tree has got some fallen pine cones. Bugs absolutely love pine cones as a place to live as I've got lots of nooks and crannies. So that's now the bug hotel complete. Find somewhere to put it, like so. And leave it in position for about a week without disturbing it and you should find the bugs will be begin to come to it. Now we're going to have a look at what materials are best suited to certain insects. So this is something to take into consideration when you're making up your bug hotel. Um, so we'll start off with ladybirds. So ladybirds are most likely going to use your bug hotel to hibernate in. Um, so dead wood, bits of bark, pine cones, these are all great materials um, for them to get in. Anything get into sort of the nooks and crannies and um, like dark spaces, that's great for them. Um, ladybirds, we really want to look after them um, because they eat a type of garden pest called aphids um, and it's been found that they eat up to 5,000 in their lifetime so we definitely want to keep them happy um, to keep the pests out of our gardens. Centipedes, spiders and woodlice also all like to lurk beneath decaying wood and any sort of decaying matter really, um, whether that be leaves or bark or sticks. Um, centipedes and woodlice are great for chomping up um, wood and recycling it back into our garden. Uh, so they're really crucial components of the garden recycling system so we need to make sure we're looking after them as well. As we've spoken about previously, bees are such an important insect for us as they are great pollinators. So um, hollow tubes such as these ones here um, that we made last time from the kitchen roll are great for solitary bees and they will use them to lay their eggs in which would be really interesting to keep an eye on. They also love to use bamboo as we've seen previously. Um, lacewigs are another insects that um, like hollow tubes and columns and they would use them to hibernate or hide in. Uh, lacewigs are really an important insect because they also get rid of garden pests much like the ladybird, um, such as aphids again and green flies. So we want to make sure we're looking after them as well.
where you decide to put your hotel can have a huge impact on the number of visitors you get. If you're looking to attract bees, then it's best to have your hotels facing towards the sun and about a meter off the ground, making sure there is nothing blocking the entrances to the tunnels so the bees can easily get in and out. Most other insects prefer cool, dark spaces, so a good way to start is to look for sheltered areas away from direct wind and rain. Your hotel will become fully booked more quickly if it is located near an existing insect hotspot, such as a hedge or a flower bed, for example. If you are disappointed with the number of insects visiting, then try moving the bug hotel to a different spot until you are happy and find some interesting beasties to have a look at. So now we've had a wee look at where's best to put our bug hotels, we're now going to have a think about what time of year we're most likely to see different bugs and insects in our hotels. So the likes of ladybirds and lacewigs will most likely use these spaces to hibernate in. So that will happen over the winter months. However, the likes of solitary bees will be looking to lay their eggs right now in the spring summer months, which is super exciting. So keep an eye out in your hollow spaces like the kitchen roll tubes and the bamboo sticks to see if you can spot that. Having said this, insects will could frequent your hotel all through the year seeking shelter or food. So it's good to keep an eye out at any time. It would also be great for you to keep a wee checklist to see what insects you've managed to spot. I'll also leave a link to a bug bingo sheet which you can tick off when you've spotted the, all the different bugs and insects and let me know when you've managed to spot them all. Thank you everybody for watching this week. I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've learnt something new about bugs and how important insects are for our world. Um, I'll leave my email so please do send in any photos or questions that you have and I'll make sure to get back to you and I'm sure I'll see you in another video soon.